Hello, Joe Chiron here with RCT, Remote Certification Training. And what I'd like to do today is I'd like to go over the splicer that you received in your equipment kit. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over all the items that came with the splicer, as well as point out certain features of the splicer, uh, terminology, certain parts that you're going to become accustomed to. And they will also go into and show you how to prepare fiber and load it into the splicer. Okay, here we are. Now I'm going to go over the individual parts that come with the splicer that is in your kit. First tool we have here is a drop cable stripper. See both sides. And you can see down the middle. Second tool we have is a three hole stripper. Looks like there's some acrylate on there, but you can see here the three holes here. The next tool we have, very important, we have our cleaver. There's the fiber holder. Here's your cleaver blade, how it slides back. So you would put the fiber in, put it down, and cleave. Pretty simple. Along with that, we have a brush. And this is, can be used with the actual splicer to clean debris and dirt. And also it can be used with the cleaver here just to get rid of dirt and whatnot that you might accumulate while you're splicing. The next thing we have is a set of spare electrodes. And I'll bring these out so you can see them. Right there. Now they come, they, you don't have to replace these to like 3,000 splices, but you have an extra set here when you do. We have the next item is a alcohol dispenser. The way that's used is here, it's filled with alcohol, as you can see. And to dispense it, you push down and you can see how it soaks the rag here. And that's how that's used. The next thing we have is our power supply with our AC cord. This will provide power to the splicer and it will also charge the battery. As you can see here, this is where they would connect. This end would go into the splicer for charging. And this would get plugged into our wall outlet. Now another feature that comes along with this unit, and I will show you this once we get the splicer in, is a little LED light. And this is the module that is used for that. This LED light gets plugged into here. This unit gets plugged into here. And this gets plugged into the splicer and that illuminates this LED light. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna show the LED light that I was talking to and how that interfaces with the splicer. So we have our one cable here that plugs into the side of the splicer, okay, as such. It's going to go in here. That's step one. Step two, it gets plugged into this guy here. And then the LED light gets plugged into... And you can see now there's a little light there and it's flexible and it kind of stays in spot. You can use it if you really need some extra light when you're looking at stuff possibly. You can do that. You can see the light that gives. The other thing that you can probably use it for if you really need to is when your cleaver 
Sometimes, you know, depending on if you need a little bit of extra light, can't hurt. You can kind of have it there kind of shining to give you a little bit of extra illumination. Some people may use it, some people may not use it, but it comes with the kit. So if you can use it, use it to your advantage. Now we have what we've been waiting for here, the splicer. Pretty simple, we have our four buttons here. We have our power, we have our magnification, we have our, this basically steps you through to hit go, and this is your back button. It's pretty simple. Next thing we have here is our windscreen. It flips up like that. The splicer will not splice unless this is in the down position all the way, like such. You have your left fiber holder. You have your right fiber holder. Okay. Down inside here, you have your two electrodes here and here, and that's what does the fusion of the glass. You have your the little blue guys on either side. They are your V-groove, and your bare fiber gets loaded, and that, that helps align so they can get fused. Once you prepare the fiber, you would put those down, close the fiber holders, and then you would hit the, you would close the windshield, and then you would hit the splice. Now it's turned off right now. I'm going to turn it on in a second. The other thing that we have here that is an, another important thing, pull back, is the heater or the oven. And what this does is when you are done splicing, you open the wind cover up, open your fiber holders, you would take your fiber out. Now you would slide the heat shrink protection sleeve up and pretend there's a fiber here. And I will go through this. This gets put in the heater, and then you would close it. Obviously, this is inside there, and it would shrink the heat protection sleeve down on the fiber, protecting it. It will automatically come on and go off. Another feature that this particular splicer has is it's got a power meter and VFL built in. This is your VFL port. And this is your power port. And it allows you to actually check the splice before you actually even take it out of the machine to see if you have a good splice. Even though your splice estimate shows up on the fiber splicer screen, this is how you really know that if you have a good splice or not. The controls for that, those two things, are found in the front here. So you have your units, your wavelength, 650 nanometer red light and the power to turn those on. So now when all things are said and done, to start this, this is your power button. Unit fires up. And then to start splicing, you would open the windscreen, prepare the fibers, put them in, put them Put the fiber holders down, close the windscreen, and then you would hit splice. So I'm actually going to go through and run a splice, but I just wanted to go over to the basic understanding of all the parts for the splicer. Okay, it's time to go through and do our splicing. So I got to get my fiber trash can. I need my alcohol, I need my lint-free wipes, I have my fiber here that I'm going to fuse together, I need my three-hole stripper, and I'm going to need the cleaver. Okay, so now that we have every all the, the tools assembled, let's begin. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open our fusion splicing windshield. And I'm going to open both fiber holders. Okay. Of 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to strip the fiber using the three hole strippers. And remember, we take little bits when we're stripping. That takes off the 900 micron tight buffer. Now I'm going to take off the 250 micron acrylate coating. Now I have to clean my fiber. Get some alcohol and a lint-free wipe. And I have to clean off the fiber. And I get my cleaver. Open that up. Put the fiber in. Into the right slot. Put down the fiber holder. Bring down the top. Push the blade. Get the fiber scrap, put it in the scrap can. Now I have one prepared fiber. So I'm going to lay that in the fiber holder, in the V groove, making sure that I do not let the end of the bare fiber go past the two electrodes here. Cannot go past that. So now I'm going to get my second fiber and I'm going to prepare that. Again, little, little nibbles taken off the tight buffer. Now the acrylate coating gets removed. Alcohol. Clean the fiber. Now I cleave. Discard my fiber shard in the trash can. And now I load the fiber into the second fiber holder. Again, do not let the fiber tip go past two electrodes. So now my fiber is loaded. Now the one thing that I did not do is I did not put the fiber protection sleeve on. And in this case is because I'm doing a demonstration, I have open-ended fiber, you can see here. So I'm gonna put that on now. You can't usually do that if you're splicing two fibers that are connected. But I just wanted to make you, make, make you aware of that. So now I'm gonna bring my windscreen down The fibers, they come in, they align. And you see how this is blinking. That's the basically the play or the go button. That's saying, all right, time to splice. You hit the splice go button. It's going to align it again. And it's going to fire. You see here? Fiber spliced, and it's telling me my estimated loss is 0 0.000 dB. So they're saying there's no loss across that. Again, that's an estimate. It's a theoretical value. The only way to actually test that is to put light with a power meter and light source through that. So then what we do is we open it up. And when we open it up, it does a pull test on the fiber to make sure that there's a strong fiber or strong fusion splice. We slide up our protection sleeve. I always open the opposite side. Go like such, trying so everybody can see this here. 
you slide the protection sleeve across your fusion splice here and you make it so it's even, the same amount of buffer on either side. You open up your oven, place it down inside the heater oven, close. Notice that the red lights came on. That means it's turning on, it's heating up, and it's shrinking that protection sleeve down over our fiber fusion splice. It'll beep when it's done. As such, you can open it up. And there you have a completed fusion splice. And you can see what the fusion protection sleeve is. There's a silver stainless steel rod in there, and that's what gives the protection of the splice. It's okay when you're, you can see here, I can pull this way. That's where your fusion splice is strong. But if the fusion splice bends in the middle, that's where it becomes weak. That's why this fusion protection sleeve is so important. I hope this was a good video and you learned a lot about your new fusion splicer. Thank you.